opened up. I want to welcome all family and friends at the homegoing of my father, George W. Lambert Jr. It's a great honor to officiate this homegoing service. At this time, Phil Redmer will read the obituary to my brother in law. George Willis Lambert, Jr., age 85, of Virginia Beach, went to be with Jesus, his Lord and Savior, on January the 17th, 2018. He retired as Master Chief Petty Officer from the U.S. Navy for 22 years of service. He then retired after 20 years of civil service. He was preceded to death by his parents, George and Joe Lambert, his four sisters, Alma Beatty, Eva Neal Virginovich, Tommy Guthrie, and Francis Connell, and his brother, Eddie Lambert. He leaves to cherish his memories his loving wife of 54 years, Norma Jean Lambert. His daughter and son-in-law, Janine and Phil Redmer of Gastonia, North Carolina, his son and daughter-in-law, George III and Christine Lambert of Virginia Beach, his son and daughter-in-law, David and Ian Lambert of Virginia Beach, his son and daughter-in-law, Joel and Christy Lambert of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and his son and daughter-in-law, John and Virginia Lambert of Virginia Beach. George also loved his 13 grandchildren, David Griffin Jr., Caleb Lambert, Stephanie Lambert, Nicole Redmer Jones, Amanda Redmer Schultz, Joy Lambert, Sarah Lambert Pikeman, Gloriana Lambert, Alexis Lambert, Christina Lambert, Christian Lambert, Vanessa Lambert, and Christian Lambert. And two great grandchildren, Ryder Griffin and Grayson Schultz. He also leaves many other family and friends to cherish his memories. Thank you, Phil. You did a wonderful job. Amen. We're going to sing one of my dad's favorites. I believe it's one of his favorites and probably a favorite of yours as well. Uh, Christy Lambert will be singing Amazing Grace. Can somebody quiet down these? No, that's my thing. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and, uh, that life exemplifies this scripture, Proverbs 20, verse 7. The righteous man who walks in integrity and lives a life in accord with his godly beliefs, how blessed, happy, and spiritually secure are his children after him, who have his example to follow. George Jr. has left a wonderful legacy of faith for his children, friends, and colleagues. For example, not only I'm still in church, amen, my, bro my brothers are, are attending church and serving in the local churches, my sister's attending church, and that's just a legacy of my, my dad's faith, amen. And, and it shows through us, our, uh, the children. And at this time, since he did leave a legacy of faith, not just for our family, but for those who called him Dad, Dad Lambert, for those who considered him Dad. Amen? Yes. I remember I was talking to somebody because, you know, I, I was, Dad was part of my congregation, and, I, and, and I'm his pastor, but he was, he was still my mentor. Amen? And it's kind of a, a strange relationship, but it was a wonderful relationship. And, um, I didn't just only lose a father, I, I lost a friend, I lost a, a humble servant that served in our church locally and, and gave his very best. Matter of fact, the last, last Sunday he was serving, passing out bulletins, a faithful man of God, amen? And I believe he's leaving a legacy of faithfulness in the people that he has touched all through the years. He believe that today? Yes. And at this time, I, I, with the legacy of faith that he has left, I would like to have some uh, family members come up and, and reveal some good memories about Dad, George Jr. And uh, they can come up right now. Praise the Lord. Much older than me. Good afternoon. I'm actually kind of doing this for Mom. Um, she had found a note as she was going through her own essay through pictures of things that she had written him. And she was going through stuff, and I was sitting at the table at the house, and I heard her say, Oh my gosh. That's a baby from my gosh. And I said, Look, and she said, Look at the date of this. Is it Monday the 27th? And I said, Get my phone out so I can go what day it was. And I said, Yep, yeah, it is. She had written this little note to him, it was a card on January 22nd, 1987, 31 years ago. And she wrote, my dearest cousin George, thank you for loving me. Please try to think of five things that you would like me to do for you. I love you, Norma Dean. Well, now she was thinking he was gonna say something like scratch my back, rub my feet, you know, make me a steak, something like that. You know, she was thinking of all these things that she could like physically, you know, do, right? So I guess he thought she was going to be the typical woman and wanted more deep answers. I think that these answers that he gave represent who he is. We all have faults, and the most important thing to do is those we see them. And we ask for people to help us with those things. And to recognize our shortcomings is the most important thing. And these were his answers. He gave her five. Number one, forgive me when I'm hard to live with. When I say things I shouldn't because of nerves. Number two, pray for me. I need help so that I can be a good husband and father. Number three, never change. I love you just as you are. Number four, live longer than I so that I will never know the loneliness without you. Number five, Always love you. Great. Have a beautiful day. I was one of those who were privileged to, uh, to call dad a dad. I did it by permission because when my parents passed away, I asked mom and dad if they'd mind if I called them mom and dad. And he allowed me to do that. So I've known him for 30 plus years as dad. If you can find yourself in the Bible, and we all can, if you study it, you'll find yourself there. You'll find your beginning, you'll find your destiny, and you'll find your end. And a verse that best describes Dad Lambert is found in the book of Micah. <coughs> he has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? 
but to do justly, to love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. And that really sums up that way. Amen. Amen. Well, that's very fitting to have the oldest because I'm the youngest. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm glad you guys could make it out today to celebrate my dad's life. I just want to read you something. I was going back and forth on what I was going to say today, and I woke up this morning with this. There's a lot of great qualities that my father possessed. He was a man of honor, integrity, devotion, selflessness. He was full of strength. But the greatest quality my dad possessed was his capacity to love. If you had the opportunity to know my father, you would know that you would know him by his love and the love that he showed towards you. My dad taught me a lot of things growing up, but the most profound was that real men know how to express real love. His ability to love selflessly, unconditionally, was one of his greatest strengths. There are many things that I'm going to miss about my father. I'm going to miss seeing him at church every Sunday and talking politics. I'm going to miss going over to his house and watching the UFC fights that he recorded for me because I didn't have cable all the time. And I'm going to miss going over and helping him doing the house chores and fixing everything that needed to be done. But most of all, I'm going to miss four simple words. You see, no matter how long or how short the phone conversations we had, no matter how important or serious they were, he never forgot to say something before we got off the phone. Four simple words that always meant so much to me that I always look forward to hearing. And that was, I love you, son. <laughs> My father never wanted you, to know, wanted you not to know how much he loved you, and he never wanted you to forget that. I'd like to end with a scripture that I feel embodies my dad's life. And it's John 13, 35. In this passage, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He knows he's not ready to go to the cross and go home to be in heaven. And he wanted his disciples to know how to live out his legacy through him. This is Jesus speaking. In that same way I love you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognize you are my disciples. When they see the love that you have for one another, by, all, by this all men will know that you are my disciples, by the love that you show towards one another. Amen. My father was a true disciple of Christ, and his greatest legacy is the love that he showed to his family, his friends, and all those that he came in contact with. Thank you. Amen. Most of you guys know that I'm the first grandson that George had the privilege to uh, love. <laughs> it's, it, it's been a little hard because it's been an emotional few years. So I got the call Wednesday of the text and I talked to my mom. And immediately I said I'm coming up. I had to leave my mom, and my wife, and my son back at home. Unfortunately, due to the government shutdown. So. Um, but as I raced up here and I got to my aunt's house, I sat down for a few minutes before I went to sleep. And usually, like I do, I have something else on my mind. So, <clears throat> yesterday was the start of the emotional roller coaster of beating into the morning of the passing of my granddad. And it's been a blessing for 40 years. He was part of my life, it touched so many lives. He served the country for, two, for 22 years in the Navy, retired as a Master Chief Petty Officer, then 20 years in the civil service. People like this are never forgotten, as it says on my shirt, unfortunately, all the on press. <laughs> but honored by those who choose to walk in their shoes, and a lot of you guys choose to walk in their shoes to this, to this day. He was a sailor sailor drifting around Mother Earth from the Pacific Rim to the Atlantic Ocean during two wars. Today, Jesus asked him to hang up his dungarees and his khakis up to take his lasting journey into the sunset over the horizon. It has been an emotional hard two years with the passing of three prominent men in my life. So we all took a glass to, the, uh, <clears throat> to honor these men who are now serving God for eternity. And let the warriors of today be reminded until Bahala. Love you. Master Chief Petty Officer, George Wesley Lambert, Jr. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all for coming to share my support and love. For those who don't know me, I'll be 
oldest of the songs, or as my dad would call, number one stuff. <laughs>
and a, st a strong pillar and, and a strong pillar in our church. When you think of a pillar, you think of someone strong. You think of something that's strong, something that holds, something that supports. The dictionary describes a pillar as a column that is one occupying a central or responsible position. Brother Lambert was a dedicated, committed, submitted, grateful, faithful, trustworthy, dependable man. He was always there on his post, which was to serve others. He, together with his faithful, loving wife, Norma Dean Lambert, both with friend friendly smiles and warm hearts that radiated to everyone that entered into our sanctuary. They were both on their posts. They made you feel uh, belong. They made you feel welcome. They made you feel loved and a part of what was going on. So we're here today to respect, to appreciate, to salute, to show honor to the victorious man, more than a conqueror, a masterpiece, one of a kind, a leader, a winner in life, a blessed man of God, an overcomer, chosen for the master's use, hand-picked by God, destined to win. He was a problem solver, strong and courageous, amazing, created in the image of God. He was confident in what he did, a light to his community. He was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. One thing that impressed me the most uh, was his boldness to take a stand for Christ. During the Christmas holiday season, you can drive by his house, and on the rooftop, he would have a large display of the major scene, the nativity, Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus, lit up on the top of his roof of that house that everybody who passed by would see and know that a man of God, a Christian, those that believed in Jesus Christ lived there. Most people would have this display on their lawn. And I've seen some people display it on their front porch. It was saying, it was speaking loud and clear. There was no mistake in the message being portrayed to, to anyone that Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all, all men unto me. I thank God that we got uh, somebody joining that great cloud of witnesses looking over the balcony of heaven, cheering us on. And we are joyful today in the fact that he is with the, our Heavenly Father and that he has fought a good fight. He's finished the course and he's kept the faith. Lord, just opening our eyes and our understanding that we know the hope you're calling. 
Father, that we'll, that we'll know you personally. And that everyone that's here, Lord, we just have a personal experience with you and know that how much you're loved. And they're loved by you, Father. And Father, I thank you for everyone here. And Father, I thank you that you're just ministering comfort and strength to everyone here that's um, uh, mourning my father going on with you, Lord. And I thank you for him, my dad. And I thank you that we'll all be with him soon, Lord. And we trust in a, in a moment and strengthen in our eye, Father. We thank you for being there soon. So, Lord, we thank you for the privilege and the honor uh, for this man that you've blessed us with. Lord, we thank you for his faithfulness to you, Father, uh, all that you're doing for all of us that we can continue on to to know you personally, and we thank you for him that he set that example, that we can know you personally and have a personal relationship and fellowship with you, Father, to your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for all that you're doing to minister each and everyone here by the power of your Holy Spirit, and we thank you, Father, for this celebration time. Father, uh, we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Vineyard Church, and I have the honor to work with every week with George and his family. And um, another day, um, after I heard the news, I was, yeah, I was praying and reading my Bible, and it was in God's uh, I was putting George on my heart. And as I was reading, um, God brought me a, a verse in the Bible. It's Genesis 25, 8. It says, Then Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. The Lord really uh, stopped me at that verse, and he actually, even though I never had the honor to meet um, George, um, the Lord stopped me there and, and wanted George to know that that was about his dad, too. That um, that phrase, full of years, and he, he lived the life in God's purpose. He, uh, he, he accomplished the task that God had for him, and I felt the same. Um, and so I wanted to let you guys know that... Um, the Lord wants you to know it's kind of like the theme that's been going on. There has been a good legacy left. And I can even see the legacy through George and, and the way he carries himself every week. He's been a blessing to our church and um, all those things. Okay, so just thank you for allowing me to share. Amen. <laughs>
few months ago, I was in Suffolk, and that's because my, I'm not a white traveler, but my wife loves to shop at Phelps. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm at Suff in Suffolk, and there were some chief selects doing their little duty, and they were selling VFW poppies. And as I went by, I had on my combat veteran Navy hat. And they said, hey, you're an old salt. <laughs> what would you have to say for us who are going to be chiefs? I said, never forget that you were an E2. <laughs> you saw the picture of George up here when he was an E2 coming out of boot camp, I guess. I guess those were probably green stripes since he was an aviation. Was he an aviation boat something? But uh, the way I got acquainted with them was we kept getting things in the mail. And we kept getting phone calls. And to my wife, my beloved wife back there, she'd say, that's, that's Norma Lambert. I went to church with her, with Moses. <laughs> <laughs> She'd say, it's from Norma Lambert. And we would get an invitation, and she would say, it's from Norma Lambert. <laughs> and once in a while, we would get a lot of handwritten notes, and, and, and almost all of them had pictures. <laughs> and they were from Norma Lambert. <laughs> but one Christmas, my wife says, we have an invitation to go over to George and Norma's home. And we knew we were there when we did see the decoration on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> and more than that, when we walked into the living room and saw all those Christmas trees, <laughs> and I said, she's married to a patient man. <laughs> George and Norma. I said, Hallelujah. <laughs> the angels in the realms of glory began to sing Gloria in Excelsis. <laughs> and I said, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass. <laughs>
and he certainly meant a lot to me too. And I found that I just need to listen and watch this man. And I did for over 22 years. And it's been such an honor to do that and to, to learn from him and to try to emulate him because he was such an honorable and fine man. So Saturday morning, as I'm laying there in bed and rose in my spirit, you know, what could I possibly say to, to honor George in a in way that could somehow be fitting this wonderful man? And uh, also, it was good. I got to get in my Bible again, something that I need to do more often. So I want to share this with you. If I needed a friend, I would want George. If I needed a father, I would want George. If I needed a grandfather, I would want George. If I needed a supportive shipmate, I would want George. If I was a sailor needing guidance, I would want Master Chief Lambert. <laughs> If I was a church member looking for guidance on practical Christian living, I would want Deacon George. And this is for you. If I was a single lady wanting to get married, I would want George.
Joel. I'm not getting up and saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a letter. And George, you carry and from his last job for the service. He made friends. He made friends with this lady there. And she wrote him a letter. And on it, she said, when she gave it to him, she would not let him read it in her you know, presence. She said, read this later. And I would like to read it to you today. It sums up George perfectly. <laughs> Dear George, over the years, you have been my friend, my mentor, my counselor, and my father and professor. You listen to me lovingly, not critically. When I didn't like myself, or felt like I'd become through the pain of my divorce, you were patient with me, and you reinforced the positive. You saw things I couldn't see. You helped me through those blackest hours when I thought the pain would never cease. George, God gave you a beautiful spirit in your ability to listen, to love unconditionally, and care for mankind. He gave me the gift of your friendship. He always seemed you always seem to know when or what a person needed and in their corner at that at that just time, right time. I remember telling you that during my Venice walk, the question came up as what uh, would you square Jesus in any of your left lives? Now have I never had I thought of him in that way. This, 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 she typed this in really, really light. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I have monovision, and so <laughs> I remember telling you that during my Damascus walk, the question came up on whether we saw Jesus in any of our lives. Never have I thought of him in that way before, but your face came to me immediately. There's a hymn we sing at Damascus called, Emmaus called, Have You Seen Jesus My Lord? Every time we sing it, I think of you. My prayers for you is that you have the greatest enjoyment of your life May God grant you and your family your every wish and desire. Thank you for your friendship for the past years. Amen. And this recently, probably was about maybe a month or two ago, he mentioned her and said, she thought I was the Jesus. <laughs>
and he wasn't supposed to come home for Christmas. And would you believe that lady sent him home on an airplane for Christmas? <laughs> God had sent him home. He never missed a Christmas with us. He all, he's been paying the bills now. And he went on this appointment. But he didn't tell me how long he was going to be gone. <laughs> so I got to start a new chapter, like my children said, in, in my life. I'm going to start learning how to pay the bills. <laughs> Don't spend the money. <laughs> I love to give money. I love to send money to the children, to my grandchildren. We always got my son, and my daughter says, You might have to stop that. <laughs> or maybe you could just send them a little bit of money. <laughs> Which I probably will, because I love giving and I love to bless people. And I am so thankful that you all came today. You all made a lot to me. George is in heaven rejoicing. Yes. He's not getting one over on me. I'm going to start with this. <laughs> He's a man that had a strong sense of responsibility for his life, for others. He grew up poor. He did not have much. His first job as a teenager was to deliver newspapers. He did this so that he could buy his own clothes, and he purchased his own bicycle. And I was going to say Schwinn bicycle because it sounds so much better. But my Uncle Bob, is a, he collects Schwinn bicycles. And my mom had a picture of the bicycle, and he said, that's no Schwinn. <laughs> I know Swins. I have over 700 of them. Now, many Swins bicycles. He knows Swins. But then he came to me today and he said, that could have been a Swin bicycle. <laughs> Made by Swin, but a roadmaster, I believe he said it was. So I just wanted my dad to sound cool by saying he bought his first Swin bicycle. He joined the Navy out of high school and served in the military 22 years, which you know. During that time, he would send money to his mother, who was a widow. This just tells you a little bit about my dad and his character, to help out with expenses. He, he met my mother, Norma Lambert, who was serving in the military, and they fell in love writing letters. They fell in love writing letters to each other. He was married to my mother for 54 years. He's a faithful, devoted man to Norma, the family. In the process of serving the Navy, Navy, he obtained the highest rank as an enlisted person. Personnel, Master Chief Petty Officer. They actually wanted him to be an officer, but he didn't like the politics. The next 20 years, he served uh, the federal government. During that time of service, he was awarded a letter of recommendation from the President of the United States, acknowledging his contribution in coming up with ideas that saved the military money on day-to-day -day operations. We need more men like that in our government. <laughs> He served faithfully the Lord Jesus Christ in Sea Life Church. He, his heart was for the church. He loved God's church. He served actually last Sunday, not this, not yesterday, but the Sunday before he went home to be with the Lord. He was serving in the church, passing out bulletins. Yes. A man of honor, a man of integrity, a man that's faithful. The Bible says a faithful man will abound in blessings. And George certainly did abound in blessings. 
The Bible talks about, as Christians, we have a race to run. George ran that race faithfully to the end, and he finished well. Yes. Anybody can start good, but, but ending well is a whole other story. Right. Second Timothy says it this way. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also those who love his appearing. George Willis Lambert Jr. loved Jesus. Amen. It was very evident in the way he lived his life. My dad, George Lambert, had a personal relationship with Jesus. And I believe he wanted everybody to experience that relationship he had. That's what kept him as a solid man of God. And his heart's desire is for people to know and experience Jesus for themselves. My question is for you today. Do you know Jesus? Do you know him? It's good that you knew my father, George, that reflected the, the love of Jesus. But do you know Jesus for yourself? And so, you know, Jesus said it this way. It's the narrow way that leads to life. And very few find it. But broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many fall there into it. I read that passage one day. And I said narrow, narrow, narrow is the way. And I said what does that mean God? And God said Jesus. Jesus is the narrow way. All other ways won't get you to heaven. So I want to encourage you to reflect on your lives today. And, and I want to encourage you to think about where are you at? What road are you on? And I hope that you're on that straight and narrow room. In Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, Junior brought this up in his reading. That, um, and it says it this way. This is my final <coughs> scripture. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden of sin that clings to us and possibly persevere in running the race that lies before us or keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus the leader and perfecter of our faith. Jesus is the rock of Georgia's salvation and the rock of my salvation and many of you in here. So I want to admonish you today and to anyone that search your hearts. Are you on the broad road? I want you to think about this and move to that narrow road that leads to that abundant life that George lived and is living now. At this time, I would like to lead you in a prayer. We're going to take communion. Did everybody receive a communion cup? We would love for you to take communion. This, is, this was um, a practice that my mom and dad did on a daily basis for the past three months. Um, I'm going to need a cup as well. <laughs> and uh, they practiced taking communion because I believe that my mom and dad knew how important it was to maintain a relationship with Jesus. And Jesus is, you know, Jesus is not about religion. It's not about a set of rules and regulations. It's all about relationship. That's why Jesus even hated death himself. Why? Because death separates us from our loved ones. The Bible says death is the last enemy that we put underfoot. So, so Jesus did not like death. That's why he was in a borrowed grave. For only three days. He was borrowed because he didn't need to be in it any longer because he was raised from the dead. Yes. And that's the foundation of our belief as Christians. That Jesus was raised from the dead. Over 500 people saw him raised from the dead and it's recorded in the scriptures. And we know that because Jesus lives, we can live also. Yes. And we know that this body here, this casket is not George Lambert. It's the home that he lived in. But now he's living in the heavenly abode, heaven. And we will see him soon. I think dad would prefer it to go first because he was such a planner and he likes to take care of things. <laughs> so I think he's probably working on mom's mansion right now. <laughs> working on getting it just right. He was a man that I spoke to and he said that he always wanted a stone house. <laughs> Uh, and I believe that God created a stone mansion for him in heaven. 
of course, it's going to have to be merged in with what mom likes too. <laughs> a bunch of pictures everywhere. Glory to God. Cameras sitting around. Hallelujah. Amen. So God is good. So we're going to go ahead and pray. Well, let's, let me just lead you in this prayer. Because if you're ready, because a lot of people don't know how to pray to God. And, you know, he just wants you to be real with him. And you can pray this in your heart. You can pray this out loud. But just if you're ready to move forward, go on to that straight and narrow path, the, the abundant life path, just say this after me. Me, or say, dear God, dear God, I believe in Jesus, Jesus died on the cross, died on the cross of my sins. Of my sins. Jesus, Jesus, I believe, I believe you were raised from the dead, you were raised from the white justification. Of my justification. Jesus, 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 I'm. I'm receiving you today. I'm receiving you today as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Heavenly Father, fill me with the joy of my salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I want to help you out with this just in case you've never seen one of these. Uh, it, it's a little cell phone here. And normally I have a lot of problems trying to get this. I normally need an usher to help me. <laughs> because I'm anointed to preach, but I don't know if I'm anointed to do anything else. <laughs> and uh, just take this little plastic wrapper. Just make sure that you don't spill it on your nice dress and dresses. And, and it's this little weight that tastes terrible, but you try to bypass the taste. And... Uh, this this pulls back right here. Now Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, and this was right before Jesus left. He had he had the supper with his disciples, but you know Jesus did not drink of that cup that night. He passed the cup up because you know why? There's there's a cup that's going to be reserved on the marriage day of the Lamb. The, the, it's the day that we will all be in heaven, sitting at the banquet table. Enjoying Jesus. Amen. And take your freedom. So at this time, if you can take your way from Father, we just thank you for this bread that represents the body of Jesus. Jesus, we thank you that you gave it all to us. And as we receive this bread, we receive your body. We receive strength and peace and joy. And we thank you for it. Take it in. The same night, Lord Jesus, you took the cup. You said, this is your blood in the new covenant. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And we thank you that the blood speaks in the Holy of Holies. Forgiveness and redemption and speaks eternal life. And we thank you that the blood of Jesus backs every promise of the word of God. And we receive it today with joy and thanksgiving. Take a drink. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say Jesus is good. Jesus, Jesus is good. good. Amen. He's good to us. Amen. Pray God. At this time we are we are um, ending the service, but we're not ending our memories of George. He, he left us with wonderful memories. And we will be headed out to a grave site. Service and we want to invite you to be a part of that, and we will be blessed by that as well. At this time, we're going to receive uh, some music. We should have um, the military come out to uh, take the casket out, and this casket leaves, uh, we can follow behind. Amen. Let's just bow right to prayer. Father, we honor you today, and we thank you, Father, for the life of George Lambert Jr. We thank you, Father God, that. That he lived an exemplary life, a life of honor, integrity, a life of love. And I thank you, Father God, that you're helping us, Father, to deal with his passing. And, and we know, Father God, that George may be in a different place, but he's still in a place in our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, for the life that you have given to us through him. And we thank you that you for helping us to live such a good life that he lived. And I thank you for all that you I ask, Father God, that you would bless my mother, give her peace in this time, give her joy, 
reveal your love to her, as well as all the others that's been touched by my dad's life. And we just give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you again for coming out. God bless you. We love you. At this time, we're going to place a, a song, which is one of my favorites. Glory to God. Probably dads, too. Amen. And we're going to play that song. If we play that song, we should have the military take the casket out. Thank you again. God bless you. Amen. And you're just Oh. Uh -huh.